Hi guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. I am sure that a lot of you guys are running a Raspberry Pi at home. In my case, I am running it to use Pi Hole, right? That DNS sync hole, which is doing an amazing job in my network. But I have a version 3 and now I want to upgrade to a version 5. But that Raspberry Pi version 5, I don't want it to run from that SD card because we all know those SD cards can fail. And they will, of course, fail when you're not at home, you're away for a long period of time, and now you're left with a not functioning Raspberry Pi, right? So your Pi hole is not running. Maybe you have your VPN server running on there to access your infrastructure remotely. Those services are gone once that SD card dies. So I want reliability. I want speed F as well. So what I will do, I will set up the new Raspberry Pi 5 I have to boot and run from that NVMe SSD I've mounted in the case. I have a special case for that Raspberry Pi 5 and that special case has the ability to mount a NVMe SSD in there and connect it to that PCIe slot on the Raspberry Pi 5 board itself. And now you can, of course, with some configuration, which I will get into in a moment, you can run that operating system from that NVMe. Let's get into it. So like I said, I'm going with a Raspberry Pi 5 and I want a NVMe SSD boot, but that means I cannot use the standard Raspberry Pi 5 case. I am going instead for a Argon Neon 5 NVMe case. This is a very nice case and it has the option to mount that NVMe SSD in the bottom of the case and connect it using a flat cable to the PCIe uh, slot on the Raspberry Pi 5 board. And there is also a fan built into the case for additional heat management. So the way I'm setting this up is I will still use the SD card for the initial configuration and boot to update all the Raspberry Pi software in there. And after that, I'm going to clone everything from that SD card to that NVMe SSD, and then we will adjust the boot order. Now, if you're using that Argon Neon 5 NVMe case, the SD card slot is not accessible from the outside. Once the Raspberry Pi 5 board is mounted in that case, you cannot access the SD card unless you dismantle the case. The way it, this is going to work is I will still use that SD card for the initial setup. So I will prepare the SD card using that Raspberry Pi Imager software. This is the Raspberry Pi Imager software I'm using to write that Raspberry Pi image to that SD card. Remember, we're going to use that SD card to update our firmware on the Raspberry Pi and now we will be able to choose an NVMe boot. So the first thing to do is choose your device you will, according to the type of Raspberry Pi you have, select the one you have. Now we have to choose the operating system. I always go for Raspberry Pi OS Other because I don't want to install a desktop environment on the Raspberry Pi. So I will choose the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, the 64-bit version. I am running a 8 gigabit version of the Raspberry Pi 5. So that's that. And now you have to choose storage. If you choose storage, if you've inserted that SD card in here, you will see it, select it, and then you can do some customization. What I always do during the customization in this software is enable SSH access. In that way, I don't have to connect a monitor or keyboard to my Raspberry Pi 5 or Raspberry Pi. Now I can just plug it in my network and it will get a IP from my DHCP server and I can immediately have access to it using SSH. And here we are logged in on that Raspberry Pi. Let's see what the IP address is, yes. It has the IP address I reserved in my DHCP server. So I can access it because I enabled that configuration when I was creating the SD card image using the Raspberry Pi imager. I enabled SSH. That's why I can immediately connect using my SSH terminal there. All right, because we are going to do a lot of things which require elevated rights, elevated permissions. So we will go and be root on the Raspberry Pi. That's fine. And the first thing we need to do is let's check if the Raspberry Pi is actually running from that SD card and my NVMe drive is visible. Let's do that first. And this is the command to do that. As we can see here, we have two storage devices on the Raspberry Pi. The first one, that's the SD card. And currently it is booting from that SD card. We can see it here. And the second device, storage device, that is my NVMe drive. It is It has detected that NVMe drive, so that's fine. And it is showing me the correct size, so this is perfectly fine as well. 
Now, the first thing I want to do is run a update on the Raspberry Pi operating system. So we'll do a apt update. If I can type today, let it grab all the package information. And because there are some notifications in there, it has disabled some of the repository entries. And just to make sure that everything is okay now, I will run the apt update again. Now I should not have those notifications. It should only show you now how many packages there are and can be upgraded. So the next step is to upgrade that. And the nice thing here is it will also, it will not only upgrade the operating system and the packages in there, but it will also upgrade the configuration utilities used to set up the EEPROM settings in the Raspberry Pi. So let's do the upgrade now and let's wait for it to finish. Yes, I am sure. And that's it. The update is finished. And let's do some cleaning. I mean, it is also doing this automatically, but I want to trigger it just to make sure that packages which are not being used are actually deleted from that storage. The reason why I want to have to, I want a clean uh, starting operating system is I am going to use this as a base for my NVMe boot, right? So let's clean that up. That is done perfectly fine for good measure. We will reboot the Raspberry Pi. Once it has rebooted, we'll come back. And there we are. We are back after the reboot. Let's make sure that we are root again. Yes, there we are. Now we have prepared that SD card. We have updated the operating system. We've cleaned up the packages. So the next step is to actually clone that SD card to the NVMe SSD. The way we are going to do that is we are going to use a shell script to do that. And this is a shell script which is maintained by Jeff Geerling. Jeff is, of course, one of the guys go to for Raspberry Pi computers, for single board computers. He, is, he has amazing videos on YouTube. Don't forget to check his channel out. And I'm going to use this script to actually clone the SD card to the NVMe. So the way we are going to do this is we are going to copy this to my terminal to install the script. There it is. The RPI clone is installed now. And just to make sure that we are still running from that SD card. Let's see. Yes, we are still running from the SD card and we can see the name of our NVMe storage device there. That's the one we will need that name once we start the RPI clone process. So the command is RPI clone and then the name of your storage device. In my case, that's the NVMe zero and one. Don't select the partitions, select the drive itself. Let's go for that. It will show you some information. And okay, this is what we are going to do. It is going to take that boot disk, that's the SD card here, and it will clone it to the NVMe drive. That's what we're going for, right? This is the drive we're going to clone it to. So let's give it a yes. We want to proceed. And then we have a error. And chances are that you will run into this error as well. And what this error basically is telling us that, hey, there is a file system detected on that NVMe drive you want to use to clone that SD card too. That means we have to wipe that NVMe first. So let's do that real quick. All right, so now that NVMe is empty, I will leave the commands in the description below. So once that we have done that, we are good to start the RPI clone as well, because now there is no file system on that NVMe SSD. So let's start RPI clone again. Clear the screen so we can see actually what we are doing. All right, it will ask you, do you want to clone that? Yes, we are going to do that. And we are not going to give it a label. And now the cloning process is started. Just wait for this to finish, leave the terminal open. And there we are, it has cloned it and I need to hit enter. It will now unmount that, so we are done. So let's go back with LSBLK to check once again what the boot status is. 
right so here we are it is still booting from the sd card now it is time to change that to make the raspberry pi boot from that nvme drive so that's what we are going to do and to do that we need to enter the raspberry pi configuration utility so the command for that is raspberry config let's clear this screen and now let's start up raspberry config just to make sure you can see that i'm actually the root on my raspberry pi right so if you're not using the root account you have to enter the command sudo in front of this which will give you that elevated permission i'm not doing that because i'm already in the root account so let's start up the raspberry config and here we can see the raspberry pi model i have i have that i have that eight gigabyte version so now we need to go into the menu and we have to go to the advanced options then we have to go to the boot order here we can see that it is still booting it is still selected to boot from the sd card we will change that to b2 boot from nvme usb right enter let it do its thing it has to set up some files and configuration let's wait for it to finish and now that is had it has done that let's go for and select finish here and it will detect that you've changed the boot order it will ask you to reboot i will click on yes or press enter and wait for the session to return just give it a few moments and then try to restart my session here let's see all right it is giving me a prompt let's log in and let's do a clear screen just to see at the bottom at the top all right so now we need to determine are we actually booting from that nvme ssd and the way to do that is use that lsblk command and we can see that the boot partition now has changed to the first partition on that nvme ssd and i'm actually running my raspberry pi now from nvme ssd let's see what the disk space looks like you can see here that it is actually booted from the nvme indeed and we still have some space left of course on the nvme to install additional software so the first thing what i wanted to do with the raspberry 5 pi 5 i have is change that boot to nvme ssd and we are there and that's the way easy and simple to set up nvme boot on raspberry pi 5 so the first step is use the sd card to install the system then update everything in there and then go into the boot menu make sure that you select the boot order you change the boot order to that nvme drive and in case you encounter that error that there is some file system on that nvme well you can use the wipe command to clear that out and then run the rpi clone script from jeff gerlings uh, of course and then you will have a system running up and running from the nvme ssd as always thank you for watching don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below the video helps out my channel a lot and for now take care and see you guys in the next video bye